Linear algebra is a subject packed with so much significance that at the beginning of just about every lesson I could say that what we're going to talk about is extremely important. That statement seems to be especially true with regard to the topic that we're about to discuss. Because in this lesson, in the course of just a few minutes, we're going to learn a hell of a lot. Or, more accurately, we'll realize that we already know a lot. We're concerned with solving this crazy linear system, or more specifically, figuring out how many solutions it has. Does it have any? If it does, is the solution unique, or are there many solutions? These are all very interesting questions. And as a matter of fact, by the time we get to actually solving linear systems, which will involve Gaussian elimination if the system is complicated enough, you'll discover that it's one of the more boring topics in linear algebra, that is, until we spice it up with matrix multiplication. But for now, let's try and decide how many solutions the system has. And of course, we've already discovered that linear systems are just a problem in decomposition, where the vector on the right-hand side is to be decomposed in terms of these four vectors, and the unknown coefficients correspond to x, y, z, and t, the variables in the original linear system. So we'll always think of linear systems, or almost always, in these terms, in terms of decomposition. So let's first address the question of whether there is a solution. And that question is equivalent to finding out whether this vector can be decomposed as a linear combination of these four. Is the decomposition possible? So sometimes just saying the question in a different way helps realizing the answer. So let me paraphrase the question here. Is this vector in the span of these four? That's equivalent to asking whether this vector can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors, which in turn is equivalent to this linear system. So for intuition, let's do what we always do, go to geometric vectors and think of these numbers as arbitrary or maybe random. So I specifically didn't choose any special pattern in these coefficients. So you can truly think of these numbers as random or in a sense, random. So let's answer the question of spans when it comes to random vectors. So let's talk about random geometric vectors. So we're going to talk about random orientations of geometric vectors in space. I would like to stress one more time that I'm not identifying geometric vectors with vectors in R3 or talking about any kind of association between geometric vectors and vectors in R3. Now indeed, there is such an association, but we haven't needed it yet, and we won't need it for a while. And I invite you not to identify geometric vectors with vectors in R3, if you want to really learn the subject of linear algebra. That will come later. What I'm talking about now is merely an analogy. Some thoughts or ideas or observation is analogous between vector spaces of entirely different objects. These are once again just pictures or drawings or physical objects in our physical space. And these are triplets of numbers, completely different objects, but some things are analogous. Now whether some thought is analogous between the two spaces is entirely up to you. If you see the analogy, then they're analogous. If you don't see the analogy, then they aren't analogous. So I hope that you'll find the thought that I'm about to share with you analogous. So here is the thought. What are random, how can we think of random orientations of geometric vectors in space? Well, you can think of it as throwing this arrow up in the air, let it tumble in all possible ways, and then catching it. And that's my random orientation number one. Let me do it with my left hand. And then I'll hold on to this, and I'll toss another vector in the air and let it tumble in a very complicated way, and then catch it. And that will be my second random orientation. Now, think about this. What are the chances that they'll point along the exact same line? So in my book, the chances that they will point at, in the exact same line are zero. They, I will likely catch the second one at some angle to the first one. And the two first random vectors, the first two random vectors, will span a plane. And then I'll toss a third vector up in the air and I'll let it tumble and then I'll catch it. And what are the chances that I'll catch it 
in a way that will be that it will be in the exact same plane as the first two vectors. Once again, my answer is zero. It will not happen. It will most likely end up like this, or maybe we'll see something like this, or even more dramatic. But in any case, the chances that the vectors will be collinear or coplanar are basically zero. So with just three vectors chosen at quote unquote random, we're virtually guaranteed that their arrangement will span the entire space. With three vectors, we're most likely to span the entire space. Here we have four vectors in a three-dimensional space. Now we have more vectors than dimensions, but that's not even relevant. If we only had three, any three of these chosen at random, they will most likely be able to represent any other vector by linear combinations, by analogy with geometric vectors. If you just choose three vectors in a three-dimensional space or n vectors in an n-dimensional space, the chances are that they will span the entire space. They will be a spanning set. Any vector in the space can be represented by a linear combination of these three vectors. Now here we have four, which is one more than we actually need. So going back to the question of whether this system, or equivalently this system, even has a solution, the answer is the chances are overwhelmingly that yes, it has a solution, that yes, this vector or any vector that we could have put on the right hand side can be represented as a linear combination of these four vectors and actually four is not even necessary. Any three would do. So to the question of is there a solution? The answer is we don't know for absolute sure, but the chances are yes. In fact, in fact, if I was so unlucky that the four vectors that I chose here don't span all of our three, or as a matter of fact, if any three of the four vectors don't span all of our three, then I will pay $10,000 to the first person to point it out to me. So I think that closes the question of whether this system has a solution. Now that we know that it most likely has a solution, how many solutions does it have? Now, that question we already know how to answer because what we have here is four vectors in a three-dimensional space. Now, how do I know that R3 is three-dimensional? I've been saying it as if we can take it for granted that R3 is three-dimensional, but it really requires an explanation. So, to show that R3 is three-dimensional, I'll just show you a basis for R3, and it will have three elements. So, the following set is clearly a basis for R3. I will step out of the shot and write it right here. So the three vectors that we need are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. These vectors, let me put curly brackets around them as we always do with sets of vectors, and these three vectors form a basis for all of our three. Now why? Number one, they're clearly linearly independent. Just if you try to express this vector as a linear combination of these two, it's clearly impossible because where will the one come from? And analogously for the other two vectors. So they're linearly independent. And on the other hand, it's abundantly clear that any vector in R3 can be easily expressed as a linear combination of these three. Let's take this one for example. Well, clearly we need square root of 7 of this vector, minus 17 of this one, plus 3 of this vector. And you can easily see that any other vector in R3 can be represented by a linear combination of these linearly independent vectors. Therefore, this is a basis for R3, and therefore R3 is indeed three-dimensional. Now what we have here is four vectors in a three-dimensional space. And as we learned before, four vectors in a three-dimensional space, or whenever there are more vectors than the dimension of the space, they are necessarily linearly dependent.
Therefore, there will exist a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. Now, I'm not sure how to find the coefficients. Well, actually, you would find the coefficients by Gaussian elimination. But the whole point is that even without knowing the coefficients, we know that these vectors are linearly dependent and that that non-trivial linear combination exists and that immediately implies lack of uniqueness. And in fact, that immediately implies that there are infinitely many solutions. So this system most likely has at least one solution because the right hand side is in the span of these four vectors because all vectors are in the span of these four vectors. No matter what the right hand side was, there would have been at least one solution. And because these vectors are necessarily linearly dependent, there will be infinitely many solutions. It is now time to draw simple but important conclusions that apply to all of linear systems. When we treat linear systems as problems in decomposition, the following conclusions become abundantly clear and can be treated as universal truths. That there are only three possibilities, no solutions, a single solution, or infinitely many solutions. There are no solutions when the vector on the right hand side does not fall within the span of vectors on the left hand side. There is a single solution when it does and the vectors are linearly independent. And finally, there are infinitely many solutions when the vector on the right is within the span of vectors on the left, but the vectors are linearly dependent. In particular, when a system has fewer equations than there are unknowns, we will necessarily find ourselves in a situation where there are more vectors than the dimension of the space and there will necessarily be either no or infinitely many solutions. A unique solution is not possible for systems where there are fewer equations than the number of unknowns. And one more important case, when we consider a system that has exactly as many equations as there are unknowns, and when interpreted as a decomposition problems, the vectors are linearly independent, then there is always a single solution. Why? Because these vectors would still form a basis for the entire space. So no matter what's on the right hand side, there is always a solution. And the solution is unique because the vectors are linearly independent. These systems are called square. And square systems occupy a very large part of linear algebra.